You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. Topping the list for us tonight, we're hearing from Knox County District Attorney General about a year she called, quote, challenging in many ways. The DA says 2021 was a busy year for her office. We were coming out of the thick of the COVID pandemic, meaning courts were starting to try cases again. Plus, Knox County was seeing a record number of lives lost to drugs. In 2021, we had 54 homicides. The year before that, we had had 45. So that was a significant increase in homicides countywide. And with our overdose deaths, um, we hit an all-time high. We had 498 suspected overdose deaths, so almost 500. And prior to the pandemic, we had been down in the 350 range. Allen thinks the pandemic factors in. She points to a nationwide trend and says the numbers aren't just specific to Knox County. Allen believes there is a correlation between the isolation and the stress and the pressure that people were under during that time. Now the district attorney's office has put together an overdose fatality review team that partners with preventative agencies to aid in mental health. They are also working to establish a new mental health court this year to help people steer away from the drugs and overdose deaths. Next now on the Big 7, an Knoxville man is facing charges after a deadly motorcycle crash over the weekend. This happened last night along Bruin Road in North Knoxville. We're told 29-year-old Sharif Ahmed was riding his motorcycle when a car crossed into his lane and hit the motorcycle. Ahmed was thrown from his bike and died at the scene. The driver of the car took off, but community engagement response team officers later tracked him down near Pershing Drive. He's now been identified as 25-year-old Andres Tomas. Police say evidence shows Tomas was under the influence of alcohol at the time of the crash. He has now been charged with vehicle homicide, driving under the influence, and leaving the scene of a fatal accident. Next now on the Big 7, we're learning more about an arrest in La Follette where deputies say they found drugs and materials used to package them. The Campbell County Sheriff's Office posting this mugshot to Facebook of Derek Burge. He's charged with drug possession. Deputies also posted these pictures of Friday's raid on 27th Street. The county SWAT team reportedly made its way into Burge's bedroom, where they claim to have found meth, scales, needles, and baggies, plus $2,000 in cash. The Sheriff's Office says some of the money had been marked by deputies through undercover drug buys. Next on the Big 7, a top spot at the Knox County Health Department is now filled. A release from the county says Kevin Parton has been named Senior Director of the Health Department. Parton was serving as Interim Senior Director ever since Dr. Martha Buchanan retired. Now, before taking this role, Parton served as Chief Administrative Officer and Executive Director of Finance. We're told he has a master's degree in accounting from Liberty University. Meanwhile, the search for a new public health officer for the health department continues tonight. Remember, Dr. Buchanan held two positions. She no longer holds this role as well. Dr. Warren Sayer is serving as interim public health officer. Next on the Big 7, Blunt County has signed a new contract with the ambulance service American Medical Response. The agreement says that AMR will now focus more on patient care than on response times. Blunt County and AMR's current contract has been in place for eight years. As it was coming to an end, county officials realized the emergency response could use an update. This comes as studies have shown that what really makes a difference in saving lives is the treatment the patient receives on scene. A few other big, issues, big changes are, um, are the clinical innovations, right? So we're implementing new processes, new technology like nurse navigation that we're doing in some other communities that we serve in. Um, and then ET3, which is emergency treatment, triage, and transport. So th those two programs are really focused on getting the right care to the right patient at the right time. County officials and AMR hope the new requirements will help save many more. The new contract will begin July 1st. The agreed term is for five years with the opportunity to extend the contract. The Tennessee's governor race is on the ballot this August. And while Governor Lee is running unopposed on the Republican side, there are three Democratic candidates on the ballot. To allow voters to get to know how the three feel about the issues, the Tennessee Democratic Party is hosting a number of debates leading up to election season. The first is right here in Knoxville. It's coming up May 26th. There is also one set for Nashville June 21st and a third in Memphis on July 12th. Election Day is coming up on August 4th.
Across the country, lifeguard positions have remained open since last year as departments struggled to hire, but that could soon be coming to an end. Last year in Blount County, two pools were forced to close, you may remember, on certain days in order to make sure pools had enough lifeguards. We spoke with a lifeguard at Elmer Brine Pool who says with COVID restrictions going down, this summer looks to be a lot brighter. A quick Indeed search shows 39 open lifeguard jobs in Knoxville from AMR and YMCA to positions at resorts. Lifeguards are in hot demand. Many lifeguard positions are part-time, perfect for teens looking for a summer job. And if you or someone you know is interested in a position but don't have the training, no worries. Through the American Red Cross, uh, to get certified. If you complete that pretest for the swimming, you get into the class, and then that's where they train you up for about a week on the, uh, the different skills it takes to be a lifeguard. Remember, without lifeguards, it makes it harder to ensure swimmers' safety when enjoying the pool. Shortages can lead to shorter pool hours, and even in some cases, closures.